Hello and welcome back to awtoolbox.com. My name is Glenn Keller and I am your instructor for the Using Active Workspace Essentials in Teams Center 2412 course. In this demonstration, we are going into Active Workspace and we're going to start learning a little bit more about what the interface has in store for us. And we need to begin by navigating and learning all the different ways we can make our way around the system. So to begin with, in our previous video, we talked just briefly about some of the key concepts and things that you can expect to see on this interface. So in here, uh, you can come in and see a list of commands on the left hand side. These are going to be called your global navigation commands. The elements that are on the inside area, these are going to be called your tiles, both of which allow you to either navigate or perform different actions. To begin with, we're going to look at the command bar. Now there are a lot of different command bars or toolbars that are available in Active Workspace depending on what page you are on or what location. And depending on what you select, it does different things. So for instance, if I select this assistant option, it'll throw up a little panel here that I can interact with. If I do the explorer, it will take me to an entirely different location inside of Active Workspace. So in this case, it took me to the Explorer and I can see several folders that I can interact with. But the key note here is that as soon as you go into another page, you have additional options to interact with for your components or for your uh, views that you're interacting with. So there's a whole bunch of different toolbars that will show up depending on where you are at and what data is displayed. If I go back to the home page, so selecting the home icon here, you can see that the Explorer also has a tile and we'd referenced this a little bit in the previous video, but the Explorer tile does the exact same thing. It'll take you there. So some of the tiles on that home page will do similar things to what you can see in the command and just note there is more locations or are more locations of those commands if you are on different pages now other types of commands like reports changes inbox explorer all of these four are going to open up a specific location in the system Assistant is a location that you can access recently used data, your clipboard, you can click the more icon down at the bottom. Uh, it just depends on what's all configured in here and you can see there's a way to see previous, previously loaded information. If I come out to the tiles, there is even more available. So I can come in here and I can see various different things that I can interact with. Um, so first of all, we saw Explorer, but I can also go to my inbox over here. And if I select my inbox, you can see it takes me to my inbox for workflows. And that's where I can actually perform tasks that are assigned to me. If I go back, I can see there's other things like save searches. So if I've executed searches and saved them in the system before, I'll see those here. So for instance, if I do a just a very simple search, uh, in this system, I'm gonna search for 090 star. Uh, just note that you do need a star at the beginning if it's only a partial ID uh, by default in the system. I know I have an ID that begins with 090, so I am gonna put that in there, and I can see that I get a couple of responses in my search results. So in here, I now have something that I could save off as a save search, and I'm going to use another toolbar that is available above this search results to save my search. So I'm going to say save search and you can see that another type of panel opens up. So I can see that's over here and I will go into these panels a little bit more as we get into various use cases, but I'm going to undock the panel here. I could also make it bigger and then move that across to be able to work with it a little bit more if I wanted to and I can make it wider so in here I'm going to call this my 090 star search maybe I do this every single day and then I'm going to say I want to pin it to my home hit save and that'll create a save search that I can run over and over again 
Now, if I go to the home page and I look at save searches, then I'll see that my save search is available. And I can even see that it runs the search and I see the results right here. So I don't actually have to execute it after the fact. If we go back to here, so save searches will actually give you access to searches you've run in the past or commonly executed searches. Um, you also have advanced searches, which we'll go into more in our searching overviews uh, that will query the system as a whole versus a subset of data. Um, you have different abilities to work with query builder or projects, depending on who you are in the system. If you are not an administrator, you're probably not gonna get access to work with query builder. Um, however, projects, you may be able to get view access or maybe you're a project administrator and you need to manipulate those. Um, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different things in here. If I click new part, this actually does something a little bit different. So, so far we've navigated to a different place. We've seen save searches, but we haven't really done much of something else. If I click new part, you're going to see it do a couple of things. So it's going to go in and open up my Explorer, and then it's going to open up a panel called add from the right hand side, and it's going to filter that panel by a specific object type. So if I click new part, it'll take me to the home and then it'll open up the add panel and it filters by part. And there may be other types of tiles that your administrators have provided you to help automate some of these nuanced clicks that I have to go through in the system. Um, and then you can interface and create the data. So I could come in and say my new part and choose add without going into the details too much at the moment. And you'll see you can get little notifications if things are correct or it, you'll get notifications and sometimes these will have buttons in them. So definitely pay attention to those notifications. Some of them will ask you to download some things or some of them will be red and they'll, they'll be more persistent. But you can see my new data gets created over here. So if I go back to home, these tiles can do a wide assortment of different things for you in the system and your administrators can use these tiles to automate different tasks for you. If I come in a little bit further into this, I sometimes I don't really like the layout of the tiles that have been provided to me. Um, I like to move my desktop icons in a very specific manner. So in Active Workspace, you have the ability to do this as well with one big caveat. Sometimes it's necessary for the administrators to go through and freshen up these displays. And if that happens, your stuff is gonna get reset back to kind of an original layout. But that doesn't happen often and we try not to do that. So if you right click on a tile, you'll notice each tile has different settings. Um, all, if all your tiles have this, what it's going to allow you to do is click it, don't drag it, but click it, just one click, and it's going to resize the tile for us. Now, since the Explorer is something that I like to use, I'm gonna make that one a little bit bigger, but I don't need it that big, so I'm just gonna make it a little wider. So there's three different sizes that come out of the box. That's the large, the medium, or wide as they call it, and the small. Um, but your administrators can turn off individual sizes. So if you don't get one, it may not be a bug in the system. Click off of it again, just in this blue area over here, and it'll release the lock you have on that tile. So now the tile's in place and you can click it in that location. Now, if I right click the inbox tile, you'll notice I could rearrange this one. This one is a little bit different because it does have uh, a little bit of interactability in it. It'll tell you an update live if there's any new inbox items or anything like that. But otherwise it inter interacts the same way. If I right click this help tile over here, you'll notice that it's a different color. So the tile colors typically indicate what type of function that they are. So in this one, you'll notice I have no additional abilities on the tile, but the color is different, indicating that it's a help tile. The dark blues are going to be primary type of functions that you're working with. And then the light 
blues are typically commands that you execute. And there's a whole assortment of these. Um, save searches will be this lighter brown color, kind of a tan. Um, so with that color coordination, it might help you click the right tile instead of accidentally clicking the wrong one. Now, in addition to all of those cool things that you can do with tiles, just note that some of the tiles will also have a little icon on it up at the top right corner. Now, this tile, this basically means that you can unpin that object so you can get rid of that tile. Now, there is no way for a user to go in and recover that after the fact. Um, so if you do unpin a tile and it isn't something you could search for and pin or it's not a saved search like the one that we created a moment ago down below here, we pinned it to home so it's down here. So if it's neither one of those, uh, then you can't just go find it and pin it again. So if you click this unpin, make sure that you're not going to need it. Otherwise, you're going to have to hit up your help desk uh, to get that tile added back for you. Uh, a lot of administrators will actually disable this button, so you may not see it at all. But if you hit it, like I'm going to, click it once and the tile will disappear. So at that point, again, you could ask for it back, um, but be, be wary as you're removing tiles. You'll notice that my search tile is here because I had chose pin to search when I built it. I can unpin that, but I could go get that. I could go back to the search, select it, and choose pin to home. Um, these default ones, I can't do that. All right, so tiles are pretty cool. You can also right click them and then drag them around. So maybe I want this tile, I don't use it as much. So it's gonna go all the way over here. Um, and I'm gonna drag it into this little box and let it go. So at that point I can release it and I've moved that for me only. It doesn't move everybody's. Um, just note again, uh, if you move those around, take note of where you did it. You can create your own groups with these. So if you move it around, I can move it into its own group and it'll isolate and reorder. These are very much like the Windows tiles that you see here. So if I right click and I say resize or move um, or resize or drag and drop it, it can create new tiles. It's very much like that. So those toolbar options, wherever you're going to, wherever you're navigating to, the tiles will help you get there. Uh, the tool, global toolbar on the left hand side will stay up at all times and be available for you. And then these other toolbars around the system are going to have additional options depending on what you have open. So notice some of them will have add, paste, you can export to Excel, and so much more. So as we get into each one of these capabilities, we're gonna dive into those menu options. But one more big menu option to navigate around Active Workspace is going to be this bar up here. So this bar is going to have a lot of the menu options that you would use most frequently. Uh, so cut is grayed out there. You can see copy is grayed out there as well. I have, or copy is uh, enabled and paste is grayed out. I have the open command, which allows you to open things in new tabs, uh, new windows, or maybe in integrations. So if I say new window, it'll open that up in a new window. Keep my session and show me that detail. And then I could dual screen it or you know, use half my real estate for that. Close it and I'm still right in here. So you've got a nice little tool here that allows you to do that. You can open a new tab, you can launch it in the rich client if you have a rich client. Uh, again, you may have more options here to launch that. And then you have the layout option here, which is kind of newer in some of the newer versions of Active Workspace. Uh, in here, I can say tree or details, tree or details, and you'll notice that there's different arrangements. And when I do that, it's left and right. And then when I come back in and say top and bottom, I could have it like this. So the default is kind of what I teach to and what I like to see. But uh, feel free to play with those arrangements as needed. We may go through different iterations of that. Just note that you can always hover your mouse in the middle and drag a page, a column, or anything like that over. And then once you get that, you'll notice you could snap it back by just clicking this, but it doesn't 
it, it records that as this for you. So if you want to put it back, you have to do that. Now, if I pull this over, pull down my layout, go to tree with details, then flip back, then you'll see it has saved the state of those two objects to that location for me. So I don't have to constantly drag it left and right. This blue bar at the top is also fairly dynamic. Um, it will, anytime you have any type of navigation open, you can say I'm on this object here. Uh, these little arrows that are in between the objects work like breadcrumbs. And if you select them, you can dive down into individual components like my new stuff folder and see data inside of there. Um, so definitely check out this command bar, play around with it a little bit. Uh, I can come in here and I can select elements and choose cut as well. And notice if you hover over any of the icons, it is going to have a really nice little tool tip for you and tell you a little bit about what it does. One thing I do know is that the labels that we had turned on a little bit ago do not show in this toolbar. Now, if you don't know what these are, you can just hit the dot 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 on the far right of this. And if you hit that dot dot dot, you get new, edit, copy, paste, and a whole bunch of other things. Just note that if a button doesn't show, it's hidden for some reason. So maybe you're not standing on the right object, or maybe you are doing the wrong scenario to utilize that, something along those lines. And you may have more or less of the buttons that you see in here, but we have just a basic installation here. The only additional things that you'll see are the change management components. Finally, the last thing that you'll see here is when you're standing on an object, you can see it's blue in the interface here. And if you hit the little eye icon in the top right corner, then you'll get the information panel. And you can drag this over as well. And you can see that I'm still in my tree and details right here. So this isn't going to stay because it only remembers the two. So in here, you'll see that I can collapse the different sections and I can see properties on the object. I can even edit the properties in this location as well. Now you may have more or less on this page as well, depending on what your administrators wanted to give you. Um, but that is another option to seeing and working with the data at hand. Now, just also note that if you open the data, so you can select an open button on it, you can also right click and choose cut, copy, paste, or access some of those frequently used commands. If you open it, it's going to open full screen for you. It's not going to have that little side navigation. And then notice that the layout option is now gone up here. Uh, you're looking only at that object. So your administrators have designed this layout for you in a very specific way. And you'll have properties and tables and different pages available to you across the top up here. So if this is an assembly, you could click content, for instance and you'll see the assembly view of that data with additional options down below. You can see things like where used, attached elements like Word docs, PowerPoints, um, those types of elements, uh, history, and you can execute reports against them. So Active Workspace does provide a lot of different nuances for navigating in the system. And it's really just getting that muscle memory down, performing that action over and over and over again. And you'll learn kind of the road about how, what kind of clicks you need to do to perform your task. Remember, you don't need to remember everything that I'm teaching you here. You just need to remember what it takes to do your task. And maybe you'll pick up a little bit extra on the side as we go through it. We thank you for joining us in this demonstration. We're going to go ahead and move off into the next one. And in the next video, we are going to be talking a little bit more about searching for data, as that's our primary thing that we need to do to execute most of our functions.